attended the AFN meeting last week, and they chose a new uh, Grand Chief, uh, Cindy Woodhouse. So Cindy Woodhouse is going to be the new Grand Chief for the AFN uh, moving forward. Um, personally, I've had a chance to chat with her, as I think the Chief as well, as well. and she's brought and been brought up to speed on some of our issues, and uh, hopefully moving forward, she can uh, she can help us. And for the um, and just moving along to the adoption of the agenda, is there any additions uh, to the agenda for today? Or any new business? Uh, Amos? Since we're political this morning, maybe we should be congratulating the new elected chief at Mr. Sargis at the credit. Go ahead. I'd like to congratulate Claire Brandt, uh, Claire Salt, Claire Salt for winning the elected chief over there and all her counselors. Oh. On from Saturday night. Oh, great. Congratulations. Oh, congratulations to them. Yeah. And uh, looking forward to working with them further. Um, yeah, it was good news. And been quite a, well, a lot of elections just recently. So uh, it's been all good. Congratulations to all the winners. Um, oh, and she's Hazel's cousin, by the way. Uh, <clears throat> So uh, if there are no new additions or new business, uh, I'd like to have a mover to accept the, um, the agenda. Moved by, oh, sorry, Audrey, moved by Audrey. Forgot to talk, say your name, sorry, Audrey. Moved by Audrey, second by, <laughs> and uh, so Carrie. Very great start to the Monday morning. And <clears throat> so anyway, yeah, so, Moving on to the delegations and presentations. Are there any delegations and presentations? I don't, I don't see any. So we'll move on to the adoption of the political liaison minutes of November 27th, 2023. Uh, we'll give you just a few minutes to just review those. Oh, sorry. Yeah, could I have a motion to accept the agenda? No. Oh, yeah, sorry, I'm sorry. we really out of it today. So um, could we have a vote on that, on the motion? All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, the motion is carried. Now, there have been no delegations and presentations, so we can move on to the adoption of political liaison minutes of November 27, 2023. Could I have a mover for the adoption of those political minutes? Okay, moved by Melba, a seconder, seconder by Audrey. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Now we'll be moving on to the um, built environment section and uh, recommendation from housing. Uh, 6.1. Do we have um, a representative from housing to review that? I do not see Lillianne on instant. If we can move on to seven and then come back to six. Okay. So we will come back to six. We'll move on to number seven, the in recommendation from consultation and accommodation process team, recommendation seven one. Uh, speaking to this, will be uh, Lonnie. Are you are you able or Taylor? Are you able to speak to seven point one? That's the um, recommendation for the purchase of sale agreement of, of October 14, twenty sixteen, between McClung Properties Limited and Magnificent Farm Holdings. 9646035 Canada Limited was the purchaser and the Six Nations of the Grand River elected council. McClung agreed to transfer to the Six Nations of the Grand River 200 acres of agricultural land in Oneida Township in return for Six Nations of the Grand River, not impeding the development of 2,200 homes in Seneca Township in the town of Caledonia. Taylor, do you want to just address that? Well, 
Monty, were you, were you going to speak or do you want me to? I can I can go. I can proceed with that, uh, Greg. Uh, yeah, so this goes back to uh, quite some time ago now when we, uh, uh, when that, being that McClung Road development, which is a huge development of 2,200 homes all together, was being proposed by Empire Homes, who was a big construction company out of Toronto. And uh, because of the political situation at the time with, uh, you know, stoppage uh, of, of uh, developments in Caledonia, particularly on the uh, south side of the Grand River uh, uh, along uh, Argyle Street, that uh, we impressed upon uh, McClung that they should come to some accommodation for their development uh, on the north side of the river. And so uh, the result of that was that uh, uh, we uh, obtained uh, 200 acres from them free uh, of prime agricultural land in Oneida Township. In 2018, the first okay. 70 pardon? Oh, yes. Yeah, in, in 19, uh, uh, no, 20, uh, 2018, the first 75 acres uh, uh, was transferred to the numbered corporation that we had uh, uh, a federal numbered company that we formed in 2016, specifically for the purposes of uh, uh, taking the property uh, near Little Buffalo, the slope property, which is 44 acres. So it essentially is like a holding company. And so we use that same company uh, to take title to this property as well in, in 2018. So the first uh, 75 uh, acres was transfers when they had construction of 250 homes. And now they're up to 1,200 homes and they're obligated under the agreement of purchase and sale to transfer another 100 acres. So that's what is happening this week, actually. Uh, the 100 acres will be transferred to the numbered corporation, which is completely controlled by council. Uh, and uh, like council is the only shareholder. I'm the president uh, and uh, Phil is a secretary or treasurer, I forget exactly, Phil Montour. Uh, but we just, we're just nominal like people who are, are just there to run. <laughs> the company doesn't really do anything other than hold land. So, uh, so we need these resolutions uh, passed for approval uh, to, and they're, they're in the nature of corporate resolutions passed so that, uh, you know, we can go ahead with a purchase and they're in there in the, as attachments to the, to the briefing note. Uh, and there's also another document needs to be signed, an uh, HST uh, uh, document uh, needs to be signed by myself and, and Chief Sherry Lynn. Uh, and these resolutions too should also be signed by the chief Sherry Lynn and one of the counselors. Uh, and that's with respect to the uh, first set, which is just authorizing uh, uh, the uh, um, the officers to to sign the closing documents, and also the second set is uh, sole shareholder resolutions uh, uh, authorizing uh, uh, the um, uh, well. It is the uh, um, I'm trying to think here now. Uh, I guess authorizing again the for me to sign the uh, uh, as as president of the corporation the, the closing documents. So they're they're but they're in the nature of corporation corporate uh, resolution. So I need approval for council for those uh, resolutions to be signed so the transfer can occur. And also they want with respect to HST GST when we transferred that first property in 2018, uh, the requirements of it because it's kind of a a uh, a unique situation we were dealing with a big uh a company from toronto and they said well uh normally i i think the way it works and uh, regularly is when a purchaser buys uh, uh property from a vendor uh, they would normally have to uh, pay the hst gst on that transaction but here it, it's flipped uh, because uh uh, McClung is paying for not only had bought the land uh, and uh, and also we were getting it free and clear of anything 
they said, okay, you you council register for HST and we'll transfer that uh, that uh, assessment of H HST on, on the land, which is which for this purpose is we valued at six hundred thousand dollars, and we'll send you the money uh, to then uh, uh, you know if you if you choose to send it on to uh, to uh, uh, corporate uh, CRA that's that's your prerogative, or or you could use it to offset against any monies you might be owing them, and just submit whatever to balance. So that's the way that scheme works. But we we uh, need. Uh, I need uh, that to be signed as well. Uh, and that would be, uh, uh, it's, it's styled as an invoice, I think it is. Uh, it would sign, um, authority to sign that. And I, I suppose uh, Chief Hill also on behalf of the council. So those two things, that, uh, three things actually that uh, we're looking for approval to sign. So the transfer is, I think is to occur on Wednesday, the 13th. So it's not, imperative that it, they be shown when we do the transfer, but it just, uh, we need the uh, uh, assurance when we tell um, uh, McClung Magnificent Farms, I guess that's the corporation they use to hold these lands, that uh, uh, those resolutions are passed and we'll be uh, sending them to them, uh, corporate resolutions if so required, uh, uh, and the, uh, the GST invoice, a copy of that as well. So, uh, so it's just, in the nature, that's the, that's essentially what we're needing, just approval for those uh, resolutions and that uh, approval to sign that invoice. Uh, thank you, Lonnie. Um, but just, just to bring also council up to speed, um, I'll be replacing, or I have been put in place for um, Nathan uh, on the CAP team. Uh, the CAP team has been bringing me up to speed on all the issues uh, moving forward. Uh, my position there is going to be temporary until we get everything sorted out with council and the files and portfolio system that we're going to proceed with. So I've just, as a transition, I've just been uh, following um, a lot of their work and probably um, replacing the political advocacy uh, of Nathan um, until that goes forward. Uh, one question I did have, uh, Lonnie, so that it really is we're not out of we're not out of pocket in terms of money in this in this transaction, are we? No, no, completely, completely financed by someone else. Uh, questions? Uh, and also, I wanted to add, too, that uh, in regards to this, under that 2016 agreement, our legal fees uh, in regards to the transfer, they're to be paid by uh, by Empire as well. So we'll be submitting those invoices to get reimbursed uh, for all the legal work that's done in this transfer. Great. Thank you. Uh, Hazel? Yes, I just want to ask a question with regard to these lands that now would be uh, 175 total for the transfer with um, so many homes built. As they're waiting for transfer, and those that's a lot of land, agricultural land, I understand. Mm -hmm. So what happens once this, this is all signed? Do we still have to wait? 20 to 15, 15 years to get an ATR before they can even utilize those lands? Or what's the, what's the case on this? Well, normally I would say yes, but uh, I'm hoping that uh, in regards to our, you know, our main lawsuit against Canada and Ontario, that uh, one of the issues that we might hopefully get into negotiations with with respect to if we ever they sit down and want to settle that case is we want to be out of the ATR process. Uh, uh, no more have it bind us because it's uh, it really is a process that's uh, uh, set up to frustrate uh, First Nations getting any land back. That's always been my opinion. And so uh, I would like us, you know, to get completely out of that and uh, whatever the eventual uh, uh, scheme that is developed, it'll be something that uh, that will negotiate with uh, with uh, Canada. Great, thank you, uh, Melba. Yes, concerning acreage too, you mentioned seventy five acres. You mentioned forty four. You mentioned a hundred. Uh, clarification for council as well as a community. 
where are these uh, located other than Little Buffalo you mentioned? If yeah. you could clarify all mm -hmm. those uh, areas that you mentioned. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, these uh, three parcels that I'm talking about are on Holloman Road 9, which is if you uh, went out from Hagersville heading east towards, uh, towards Fort Erie, <laughs> Uh, you would uh, run into that road that uh, just a little ways out. It used to be, I think, from that old uh, 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 car place where they used to take junk cars there. That road there uh, it would run you into Holloman Road 9. And, and it's just a little ways once you get on that road where these, uh, these lands are, are located. Uh, the first uh, 75 acres is one plot. The next one is a few... Uh, addresses over this and I'm talking about this one 100 acres and the last piece of land would be 25 acres once they completely finished all of their construction of their homes and that's an add-on to that first uh, 75 acres that were transferred right behind it so it would and then be two parcels of land right close together but separated by an address or two. Great any uh, any questions? Uh, I had one, Lonnie. Um, during the negotiation process, and you know, it's been going on for a while. Um, a lot of the land that that they're developing has um, utilities, right? They have you know water and sewage and hydro access. And then in these um, negotiations, is it ever uh, do we ever look upon um, uh, achieving land that has the same type of uh, hookups and utilities? That we in the future may be able to use. Uh, we haven't. We haven't actually. Uh, no, we haven't actually got that far yet uh, on lands that are primarily in urban areas. Uh, we've been kind of focused on lands out in the country uh, that are close to the uh, to the reserve uh, or within the Holloman Track. Uh, and so, you know, the slope property is just right across from uh, 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 right across from the Holloman track lands uh, along that uh, Indian town line. It's right along it. And this one is is within the Holloman track, uh, uh, but just a little ways outside of Hagersville. Uh, we also have the uh, uh, the uh, birch lands, uh, the 381 acres there that was transferred. Uh, to the numbered corporation again in 20, uh, 2017 in March, uh, and uh, those those lands are uh, are also within the uh, Holloman track. So, uh, uh, but again, it's not it's not anything that has municipal services at this point. But that's always something we, we uh, uh, you know, is uh, hopefully that uh, you know. If there ever is a settlement, and, a, and there will be, I know, in our major court case, that we can look at uh, obtaining additional lands that are fully serviced and uh, and close to uh, urban areas. Great. Uh, thanks, Lonnie. Uh, any further questions for Lonnie and Taylor? Okay. Uh, I would like to continue on with the uh, just to, for the community to read out the recommendation. And uh, complete that uh, complete the motion on that. The and whereas the transfer of the land is to occur in three stages, in which the completion of 200 dwelling units, McClung would transfer 75 acres to the purchaser, and upon the completion of 1,200 dwelling units, McClung would transfer 100 acres to the purchaser, and finally, on the completion of the 200 2,200 dwelling units, McClung would transfer the remaining 25 acres to the corporation. And whereas the first transfer occurred in 2018, and since 1,200 uh, dwelling units have now been built, and the second transfer of 100 acres can now occur, and whereas in order to complete the second transfer, two sets of corporate resolutions must be approved and signed by chief and one counselor of the Six Nations elected council, the first set shown in attachments B and C, which uh, Lonnie and Taylor had provided. Therefore, be it resolved, and this is just, uh, we have to make a decision on the, the counselor that will be signing with the chief, Chief Sherry Lynn Hill and counsel.
sure. Yeah, go ahead. A motion for Buckley. Okay. Yeah, seconder. Second by Hazel. All in favor? Any opposed? Okay. Seeing or hearing motion is carried. Um, and a motion for a second reading. By Audrey, seconder, Hazel, all in favor? Any opposed? Hearing or seeing none, motion is carried. So therefore, be it resolved that Chief Sherry Lynn Hill and Councilor Dale Bumbury be authorized to sign resolutions contained in attachments B and C, permitting the transfer of 100 acres of land in Oneida Township to 9646035 Canada Limited. We did second reading, so we did second reading. We have completed second reading, Dale. Okay, so we Sorry, did. my apologies. Yeah. Uh, in the existing resolution, there was nothing referencing this invoice here, which Lonnie made reference to about it, and it just needs a, I guess, a separate motion that would authorize Lonnie and the chief to sign that more on, on paperwork process that Lonnie explained. You're I'll, putting that motion forward? Yes, I'll, do, I'll make that motion, motion right. that uh, Lonnie, as president of the corporation, and uh, Chief Sherry Lynn Hill be authorized to sign that. Okay, and we're looking for a seconder. Second by Audrey. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Uh, second reading. And also, be it, we looking for a second reading on that motion by uh, uh, Dale, second by Audrey. All in favor? Any opposed? Hearing or seeing on motion is carried. Now moving on, the uh, chief as uh, will be taking uh, taking over from here on in. Uh, chief, we have not completed the recommendation number six. Recommendation six one from housing. Or two, six, or recommendation two. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Um, let's go back to recommendation um, six from housing. Six Nation Housing will be moving tenants into the completed townhouses currently located at 49 Herald Road, and these units cannot be properly identified until the street is named. Therefore, be it resolved that SNGREC select street names for the two intersection streets of Herald Road, currently identified as Laneways 49 Herald Road and 63 Herald Road. Where is she? Oh, there she is. Lily, did you want to um, explain some more? Sorry, everybody. Yeah, I got the wrong link this morning, so I do apologize um, for having trouble getting onto the meeting. Um, this issue was brought up to the previous council in May of this year um, regarding the development of Herald Road. Um, right now, there's two intersecting streets off of Herald Road, which have not been identified as streets. Um, that's 63, which is the road that has the tiny homes and the rapid housing building on it. Um, and then there's 49, which is the road that has the Onondaga buildings, as well as the social services 12 plex. Um, in May, it was identified that um, council would like community involvement to name the streets. Um, and it was my understanding that something was going to be built into the uh, AGA um, that would allow community to have their input on that. Um, but I was present at AGA and that did not happen. So um, now we're at the point where these units need to be occupied um, and the roads are still not considered roads. Um, and there's concern from Laura Beaver at Technical Services that it will impact emergency services ability to find the area if there ever was an emergency situation. So I'm bringing this back to council um, and just asking that uh, they have a concrete plan to name those roads um, and, and we're running out of time. Um, it was also requested that I bring uh, 
suggestions for the naming of the roads. Um, this had been talked about a, li a little bit at the last meeting. Um, and they there was discussion about going with something that was respectful um, to our traditions and our culture, um, given that we have roads named after the nations. Um, it was my proposal that we start naming the roads back there um, for the clans. But it's really up to council what they decide to name that. Okay, thank you for the overview, Lillian. Is there any questions? Um, Dale? Yeah, I was just wondering, does he have um, family, like a wife and children, and we can name them? Because that was all their land to begin with, so they gave it to us, so I thought maybe we can name it after his wife or his uh, children. There was, um, within the purchase of the land, there was the, uh, it has to be named Harold Road, and then the road coming off of Chief's Wood, which is a future planned road, is to be named Dolores. Beyond that, there was no request for further names to be considered in that family names. Okay, thank you. Um, Audrey? Yeah, it's it's nice to know that more of the history of there so that it, it, I would like to involve the community in this because they may know more about um, the history of that site and might be able to offer us some names that would be um, acceptable. So if we could reach out to the community, I would appreciate that. Okay, Greg? Uh, just uh, one question, Lillian. Um, uh, is this uh, time sensitive? Is there is there a time on this? Yes. Yeah, so we're hoping to move people in in January. Um, I was hoping that this would have been taken care of back in May, um, because it it does it's a long process to involve community and get um, give them enough time to to put to add their input. Um, but I was hoping that this would be named before January because I do have concerns if we're looking to move people in and we don't have proper protocols for emergency services to access the area. Any other questions or comments? Yep, go ahead, Carrie. I, I think that um, we, br we brought this up uh, in the last council and I think there was a name, the last uh, housing director that name was mentioned her her name was mentioned as 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 a name to one of the roads but uh, i don't know if there was any more any more thought given to that it's my understanding carrie that um that was not favorable by council given the issues that happened with removing gaylord palace's name from the arena Hazel, I think there's a lot of choices, and you could look at look at it as a historical past. Maybe it could be named after former chiefs or something along that line, because you know the whole chief's position is like an honorable position, right, Sherry? <laughs> I think so. So <laughs> I'm just saying that. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Is there any other questions or comments? So I guess um, we have some suggestions. Um, maybe I'll work with Nathan and we'll see what we can come up with um, ASAP and then hopefully um, run it by council and let's get it done because they're moving in in January. That's huge. Okay. Does that sound okay, Lillian? Yeah, um, that sounds great. So I will just liaise with Nathan going forward to make sure that, um, obviously I don't wanna <laughs> infer that this council is not going to take action on it, but just given the delays that happened last time, I'll, I'll make sure that I uh, follow up with Nathan on that. Okay, great. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks. So the next one we have is recommendation from Ontario Works. Recommendation 6-2, that the Six Nations of the Grand River Council accept the November 2023 Ontario Works written report as information. It's in your drop box. Is there any questions or comments? Okay. 
Dale moves on to accept his information. Is there a seconder? Second by Carrie. All in favor? Anybody opposed? Seen on carried. So we did seven. Let's go to eight. Um, scheduling. On Onondaga build separate uh, celebration to honor the hard work and dedication that was necessary to complete Onondaga one. The celebration will take place on Tuesday, December 19th from 11 to one at the Six Nations Community Hall. This invitation is extended to the chief and all the council. Please confirm availability. So again, um, this is for the, the buildings that are happening. That will be the celebration on the 19th. So if you're available, um, please go. Um, yep, Cynthia? Yeah, that's on our orientation. We've got something from 11 till 12 and then 12 till one, or 12 to one is lunch, I guess. Okay. All right. So we'll work around it, even um, if we just take a um, half hour or so, just to go celebrate with them, the new build. Um, Greg? Uh, yeah, that was my suggestion that we just take a break, go over. Um, I know I worked with uh, Lillianne before on the, when they did the inaugural launch of that, of that construction, that building, working with uh, Habitat for Humanity. Um, so yeah, if I, that's what I was going to propose, that we just, you know, take a break, go over. And because um, it is actually a, a pretty big deal. They do they do a lot of work that's um, basically we don't have to cover. So in terms of costs that uh, Habitat Humanity has always helped us out. So I think it's good if we have show and appearance for that. Um, Cynthia, then Dale. So can we schedule that? What would we say, 11 till 11.30? Yep. Um, we'll schedule some um, some some times for sure. Let me just check with um, Lillian for sure. Uh, go ahead, Dale. It just says on this flyer that there's a code if you want to register. So I don't know if that's something Teresa needs to do or what in relation to this. So I don't know if it's a meal thing or what. <laughs> okay, I'll get it. Um, Teresa, can you follow up on that? Okay, Teresa will follow up. And uh, for the, the times. Okay. Next one, um, number nine, uh, council reports. Number one, Six Nations of the Grand River Council to accept um, written report from Elena has, has information. All got it in their Dropbox. Is there any questions and is there a mover? Yeah, go ahead, Cynthia. I wonder if for those of us that didn't attend the Iroquois caucus, if somebody could give us a high level overview of the items discussed. I don't have the agenda on hand. Do you have it? I have okay. my report, so I can okay. go over a little bit of the report if that's okay. okay. Go ahead. Okay, so Iroquois Caucus was Wednesday, November 29th to Thursday the 30th, and that was held in Ottawa. Um, the communities that participate in Iroquois Caucus are uh, Oneidas of the Thames, Tainanega, Akwesasne, Gunasatage, Gunawagi, uh, Wata, uh, Six Nations, and those that attended were uh, elected Chief Sherry Lynn, Greg Frazier, Melba Thomas, Leslie Green, Elena Van Every, and we had also Claire available there as well as Trevor. Uh, the meeting agenda was uh, about 17 items long. Four of those were deferred um, based on um, hiring a new coordinator. So uh, the new coordinator for Iroquois Caucus will be coming on, I believe in January. Um, items of note, um, there was new business and um, CBSA, the Canada Border Services Agency was in the building and the caucus thought that it would be um, a good idea to speak with them, but but also 
noted to them directly that it should not be considered consultation as as the communities at Iroquois caucus had not uh, consulted with their community. So they agreed to that and presented their material. One thing that I that really caught my eye and concerns me is um, what they were presenting was a modernization plan and that included on one page biometrics. So their modernization plan for indigenous uh, people, which includes uh, First Nations, Inuit and Métis, um, and, and the biometrics really concerned me because that is, uh, I feel like it's an impediment into our privacy. So they weren't really clear on on what technology they would be using, but I think that's something that we should keep an eye on and how that's going to impact us. Um, there were a couple things that uh, we um, couldn't discuss. Um, there's a CPP issue going on um, nationally, um, but that group with Iroquois Caucus has not been able to meet yet. Um, what else did they, did we all talk about? Um, there was a request for, um, Gaonio, uh, that came through for financial assistance and, um, there's, I believe it's in Gunawagi. They have already um got 16 million in their build fund and they have pledges from big corporations in in their path to truth and reconciliation for 16 additional million dollars so the the um suggestion was that Gaonio make contact with um I have the name and if Claire has not already done so I can um or or Trevor I can provide that if they don't have it uh for Gaonio to make contact with them to see who they've approached for donations because that's pretty significant it's 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 most of I think what they need um so that's promising I think um and otherwise Oh, the next meeting, Oneida was pretty excited to be hosting the next Iroquois caucus meeting. So that will be happening in February, February 6th to the 8th. And I think that's that's a high level overview of my three page report and it'll be in your Dropbox. Thank you. Um, I have Greg. Uh, yeah, thanks Elena for the report. It was uh, quite in depth and uh, covered a lot of issues. Um, uh, there are three things I, I pulled out of that meeting. Um, one is, um, well, first of all, I'd like to congratulate Amy Lickers. She's our new coordinator for the Iroquois Caucus, and I think she's a good pick. Um, I had a chance to discuss uh, some of the, the her new position and uh, some of her duties, and she's really excited about it. And also, she it's not only administrative, so I think she can bring a little bit of political um insight into that into that because Iroquois caucus needs actually two positions in the, the first one being the administrator um so congratulations to Amy the other was um the Métis issue um we, we had a um a Métis organization from Manitoba come in and, and speak with us um again uh just to be clear that that Métis issue the Métis in Manitoba are primarily a municipality they do pay taxes, they buy land. Um, they were granted land through some agreement uh, through natural resources, I believe. Um, so um, again, um, I I look at the Meiji issue as being uh, all in one, whether you're from Manitoba or you're the newer group of, of Ontario and what their claims are. I know one doesn't support the other, but I put them in the same category as, as Métis, and I do not think that they will be of any benefit to us. That's my personal opinion uh, moving forward. I think the main thing here is um, it may result, uh, if we want to do anything to stop what they're doing, it'd have to be uh, a legal route. Again, that, uh, but with a legal route comes expenses. So 
Um, that's one thing I think that um, we should be always keeping an eye on as it moves through the parliamentary parliamentary system. Um, the last issue uh, that I pulled out of that meeting was the um, Canada Border Agency. Um, they, we had, of course, we made it very clear that we were not going to uh, be part of their check the box consultation, uh, that we were gonna hear them and they were gonna take some of our suggestions, which were very strong. We had very strong suggestions to them. Um, I don't know if there'd be a, a, a meeting in the future, one of the thing, one of the things is that they were lumping us into, uh, I believe, the Ministry of Immigration and Refugee Status. Uh, first of all, we're not immigrants, so we're not re refugees, and we had strong opposition to be included in that type of uh, ministry or category. Um, but that's that's some of the things that I pulled from that meeting. And um, moving forward, I think we're going to hear more about all these issues, and uh, hopefully, we can make some of our own moves moving forward. Thanks. Did Melba or Leslie want to add anything? Leslie? Uh, yeah, further to um, Greg's talking about the CBSA, it's true that um, with that immigration piece, had we been true immigrants, we would have good drinking water like the rest of the immigrants get obtained. So there was a lot of opposition to the things that where they had placed us. It's been in there 50 years. 50 years it's been that way. So I'm glad that it was brought out that day. As well, um, <clears throat> the Métis group, that land-based Métis group from Manitoba, uh, the speaker, the main woman that came forward was uh, Reva Jacobs, was her name. And uh, she sits on their, their, like their grand council. That's what they have. It was very interesting to hear about the taxes and they pay their own, their own uh, education and things like that, so. Um, and Kathy Mayer, she was there as well, uh, repre uh, representing cannabis. And there was a big discussion in the caucus regarding <clears throat> some of the things that went wrong, have gone wrong, and even were re regarded like uh, death because of the uh, inclusion or exclusion of cannabis shops. So I'll just leave it at that. <clears throat> Melba? Yeah, I certainly agree with uh, the comments that have been made. Um, although, with the Métis, the lady that had presented, she did say they have ancestry from years and years ago, and they also have land. Uh, they consider themselves uh, quite different than the other Métis. And as uh, Greg had said, they do not uh, support one another. Um, I think there was a discussion concerning, you know, how we, how we years ago, um, I guess, encouraged our people when it comes to continuation of our race. Uh, we asked our families not to be marrying non-natives. And I think we need to get back to that if we want to continue to be uh, Native people who who follow the traditions and culture of our people uh, with a language that is that Audrey always talks about with the education, which is going to be more so hopefully when the new education system gets off the ground, that the foundation, as Audrey always said, is going to be language and culture. So hopefully we blend all these other areas in that we continue to support. Uh, our language and our culture, but we cannot do that very well if we have non-natives. In fact, it comes back to residency bylaw. What are we going to do about that? Because it's still hanging there. The residency bylaw, we haven't, uh, we haven't really moved on that, and we have the right to put our own laws in place, but we're not doing it as quickly as we should. So I'll leave it at that, that uh, that really um, brought brought things to my attention concerning how we manage our families. I know a lot of us haven't haven't been strict enough. I know my sister, Virginia Beaver, she certainly was strict and her whole family, all her children stayed within our 
our our own uh, Six Nations and other other First Nations. Thank you. Thank you. So can I have a mover to accept um, Elena's written report and the verbal from um, Melba, Leslie, and Greg? And if you write your written, um, put it in the drop box for the council, councillors. I have a mover. Audrey, is there a seconder? Dale, all in favor? Anybody opposed? See none, carried. So let, yeah. Just with the understanding that the follow-up written ones will get to Teresa so she can have them for the records. Okay, because again, we have to decide, is it verbal and written or always written? So that can be discussed um, during orientation. Go ahead, Dean, we have nine, two. Okay. And this is Dean went to Chiefs of Ontario business supply chain mapping and procurement um, project. Yes, go ahead. Perfect, thank you. So I can just do a verbal report right now, but I can email my report I have right now to the rest of the council later on, if that's okay. So I attended the Chiefs of Ontario uh, First Nations business supply chain mapping and procurement project, uh, enhancing opportunities for indigenous businesses. This occurred on November 29th, and it was a day conference in Thunder Bay. So <clears throat> uh, we discussed basically First Nations businesses, current state and projects in Ontario, focusing on supply chain mapping and procurement uh, initiated by Chiefs of Ontario. So the, the main purpose of this conference was the first one that Chiefs of Ontario invited out to First Nations to gather data and input about creating a online portal for First Nation businesses across Ontario. Now, the aim is to enhance invis uh, excuse me, uh, visibility and procurement opportunities for the businesses within the nations, but also for the governments like provincial government and federal government contracts. Uh, we had various speakers there as well, like uh, Arvind Sharma, Director of Economic Development of KU, uh, Shakir Khan, he was the ex Vice President of Institute of Fiscal Studies and Democracy. Uh, we had two successful First Nation business entrepreneurs, Barry Payne and Jason Thompson. Uh, one of them was uh, Adelcock uh, Technology Furniture and Jason Thompson was Warrior Supplies. So they had a little fireside chat as well, talking about you know their success stories and how they basically did what they did to become successful and get these contracts with the federal and provincial government. Uh, so moving on here, um, when you're talking about the business portal, it's gonna be a comprehensive directory for all businesses. And they just want to get our opinion about how in depth we want this to be, like when it comes to location and all of our contact information basically. Uh, a lot of questions were asked about how is that information protected and, you know, who gets to view this type of information as well. So there's very good discussion around that. Um, first of all, nothing is set in stone. I'm pretty sure this is going to be first of nine conferences they're going to be having from now until mid-2024. And I think the next one is in a couple of weeks or next week in Toronto. So let's see here. Now, the next thing we have is, uh, like I said, the significance of this here is to address the gap in public data about First Nation businesses, because a lot of the existing data sources on First Nation businesses, um, for example, like the Canadian Council of Operational Businesses, uh, Indigenous Service Canada also has a business, Indigenous business directory. Uh, Statistics Canada also has some information on in Indigenous ownership. And uh, Global Affairs Canada is in collaboration with the CCAB, the Canadian Council of Aboriginal Businesses, to gather data, uh, gather data and analyze and export practices. So one of the comments that were talked about in discussion brought up by Barry Payne about these different directories that Canada already has on First Nation businesses is that uh, he did say around 60 to 70% of them are also Métis businesses, uh, so they are Indigenous, so they are allowed to take that amount of set-aside 
procurement money set for First Nation businesses. So this is why Chief Ontario wants to create one just for First Nations. So when it comes to the current state of Indigenous procurement, it was said that uh, the director, Arvins, did say that <clears throat> the federal government procurement stands at $22 billion annually, with Ontario at $29 billion annually. Um, a mandatory minimum target of 5% Indigenous procurement has been set. And even now, um, we are currently 1.5% short of achieving that goal. So they need to create this here to kind of bring awareness that there is a lot of money set aside just for Indigenous, indigenous businesses in, in Ontario. So um, just quick calculations on that. The potential revenues are probably around 77 million. Uh, sorry, 770 million from the federal government and uh, 1.15 billion from Ontario just for Indigenous businesses. So right now, this is just the first engagement session and conference they had just to gather data and hopefully more First Nations, nations can come out to have their input on how this is going to be created and implemented. So we can kind of get on top of this money here. So the next thing here, <clears throat> as I said, the first session here was just kind of to bridge the knowledge gaps and uh, encourage participation from everybody. And uh, recommendations after this would be to look at our own business directory. Uh, currently, I don't know if economic development does have that in place. I'm sure they do, but if not, then that information would be pretty crucial because then if the council decides to kind of follow up more so on this, I'm sure uh, Greg's going to follow the next one in Toronto and he can have more information on it as well. And we can go ahead and kind of allow our data to get in there as well. Um, and that's about it as of right now. Thank you. Is there any questions, um, Greg? Uh, yeah, thanks, Dean. Um, yeah, just to Dean's point, um, the 5% has been bandied about um, back and forth in um, a lot of the economic development uh, discussions um, with the Chiefs of Ontario. I think the um, what we have to look at, too, like in, there is a 5% procurement um, policy, I believe, in the United States for Indian businesses, especially with the federal government and military, I believe. Um, and that's pretty much set in stone. They fast track a lot of First Nation businesses um, to get uh, contracts. Uh, they even allow drop shipping, I believe, sometimes. Um, but I think that's what I think that's what our goal should be as well is to get a, a firm commitment um, from um, for the province, the provincial, and the federal government in allowing the uh, um, a steadfast five percent uh, procurement um, policy for all, all First Nation businesses. And um, I know that uh, Chiefs of Ontario are working in that direction. And I think we have to lobby the ministers on, on, that, on that point. But thanks, Dean. Uh, Dale? Uh, just one other question, and I don't know if you can answer this one, Dean, is in relation to the First Nations business, is it a requirement from the feds in the province that they be registered within the province and, or provincially or federally? And do they have to be like set up to have WSIB and all that coverage that they look for when they register and not a business officer? So I think I can speak just a little bit about that. Um, as far as I know, there is a lot of guidelines and applications you do have to fill out to be a part of the existing directories available. Um, a lot of, I don't think there is too much involvement when it comes to that because actually that was kind of brought up as well that a lot of the businesses that do represent uh sorry a lot of first nation businesses that are on the directory here also aren't like you said maybe up to standards as well so that's why they're kind of creating their own and we can put our own input to see to make sure all of those are filled in that is kind of missing outside of it so that's kind of the best i can give you an answer on that <laughs> Good. Um, Hazel? With regard to this topic, I know that um, there seemingly are a lot of businesses. However, a lot of them are not um, registered and therefore they just pay cash. And 
so that if you don't register, you're not under the WSIB in case one of your employees becomes injured. I know a lot of people avoid that just to uh, not have the government sticking their nose into their businesses. But on the other hand, it's like a safety net for a business too. If somebody should become in, injured and or if they go off work and that person should be able to draw unemployment insurance for the time that they're off. So how could you sell that topic to everyone who does not participate in getting a, an employee number, I guess, in order to have those benefits for people? Because I see what's happening is, God forbid, a lot of people are not going to have anything other than an old age pension check when they retire. And it just, it's like <laughs> poverty happening and nobody's doing anything about it. So I think if we try to encourage businesses to, to go that route to ensure their own safety, plus the safety of their employees, but I know a lot of people will say, well, you're just becoming a municipality. But nevertheless, there's there's good reasoning behind being insured. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay. So for Dean's um, report, it will be in your Dropbox, the written report. Can I have a mover to accept? Um, Cynthia, seconder? Amos? All in favor? You may opposed? Seen none carried. And um, just to Dale's question, Shirley did look it up. So it is um, for sure written. So if you have not had your written um, reports in the Dropbox, please do that. And let's go down to number 10, uh, the Chiefs updates. <laughs> Where'd he go? Can you go get um, Dewey, can you go grab um, Christopher? Thank you. So I'll just start um, regarding uh, the Iroquois caucus. I was finding out um, kind of my role because I guess they're, they have portfolios, I found out. <laughs> and I, I guess my portfolio is um, uh, Bill C-53 and they're asking what has been done. So I'm um, working on that <laughs> to get back to them. Um, also uh, have Claire to work with Trevor regarding that. Uh, a lot of what was mentioned uh, regarding um, the Cannabis Commission there, um, the new hire, the B, uh, Bill C-53, and I think also was discussed too is um, what can we do more to um, enhance the enhance Iroquois caucus and uh, really looking at that. So that went, to, I took a lot of uh, conversation around the table from the other territories. And I think also um, I'll hand out um, the CV, the CVSA um, handout. I'll give that to you guys. I'll get um, Claire to photocopy that. So that'll be in your mailboxes. So you can read kind of the modernization, what they were talking about, and just some of the wording that was there. And it was, as soon as you got off the elevator, there was um, people sitting right there and were like, hmm. I don't think this is your caucus. <laughs> and um, yeah, we weren't invited or anything. So I think that's when the questions were starting. Um, ask, what are you guys? What were you doing? Those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was just finishing up with the Iroquois um, caucus there. Um, and again, the AFN, um, we all know the AFN assembly was long, um, went to six rounds uh, for the new national chief. So that was good. And also, I think since I've been sitting on council, I think we always see that I there needs to be a different um, process in the sense of they lose quorum by the third day. They need to do the resolutions <laughs> the first day, I think, even in Chiefs of Ontario also, compared to leaving it to the third day. And that was kind of a lot of the, the talk and the, um, the complaints that were happening at the end of the day on the third day for that. Um, yeah, um, 
uh, meeting with Mayor Davis, um, had a quick um, meeting with uh, with him, and that was just regarding um, introductions, uh, looking forward and um, see what we can see what's happening in Brantford, but also to um, the resources for still regarding the Glebe lands. The second, the next thing is I did go on Friday to um, uh, to be a reviewing officer, <laughs> I guess it was called, for the Brantford Navy League Sea Army and Air Cadets. That's what it was called. And um, it was ever to have um, um, a chief from Six Nations to go. And they were excited. There was probably about 50 kids um, in there, probably age nine to, I think it was nine to 12 maybe. Um, so if anybody is looking for, they're looking for recruits <laughs> for cadets, they would love to come down here to see how they can um, help their, have um, um, our youth to go up there in from nine to, n ages nine to 19 um, there. So again, um, that's just a, a, a quick update. The rest will, I'll, I'll talk about um, in camera. But yeah, anything else you want to add, Christopher? So if anybody would like to see the written version of that, uh, the chief basically covered everything, uh, but there's a written version of that in the Dropbox and there's a more expanded version that we can talk about in camera about some more uh, sensitive uh, aspects of that. Um, and that's complementary to reports like Councillor Van Avery's. Thank you. Okay. Um, next thing we have is number eleven. Uh, motion to it. Was there any? Was there any? Was there any additions? Okay. <laughs> uh, motion to adjourn. The open. Then we're going to in camera. Is there? Um, Carrie, seconder, Elena. All in favor? Anybody opposed? See none. Carried. Thank you for joining us and have a great day, everyone.